Yeah, okay, so right so at scan, this? it looks like we have some acanthosis. And when you go in closer, the cells are pretty nice and uniform. Um, it's a clonal proliferation, but very bland looking cells. And you can see some cuticle line ducts as well. Um, since this is mostly in the epidermis, that's good for a hydroacanthoma simplex. But then down here, maybe getting a little deeper, so more like a pleroma. Yeah, exactly. And to me, poroma and hydroacanthoma simplex are on a spectrum. And I think that spectrum also includes so-called dermal duct tumor, which not everyone agrees even exists, and hydradenoma. They're all part of the acrospiroma family, uh, which is composed of kind of uniform cells with pink cytoplasm that look kind of squamoid. And then they have sweat duct formation. So this is a great example, actually. Yeah, if I just had this over here, I'd say, oh, it's poroma. This over here, I would say fits nice for hydroacanthoma simplex. So let's look closer at this. At low power, I thought about seborrheic keratosis if I first look at this. Getting closer, I see, though, that there's clones, right? Individual islands of cells that look very uniform, and they look different, right? Look at that sharp cutoff. They look different from the rest. So then you could think of, is it a clonal seb? Is it a squamous cell carcinoma in situ, like that one we looked at earlier? But after looking closely at the cells, they look very uniform and very bland. So that would make me favor that it's benign. Um, and over here, though, look. These, I mean, that could easily, I could show you a picture and tell you, oh, this is a clonal seborrheic keratosis. And you'd believe, you'd say, oh, yeah, sure. So I feel like there's a very close overlap. To me, the key to tell this apart, you can do some different stains. But the main thing I want to see is I want to find little holes that have pink cuticles, so ducts. And once I find duct formation, then I would say if it looks like a clonal seb, but it's got ducts in it, then it's probably hydroacanthoma simplex. If it begins to push down and get finger-like growth down into the dermis, then I would call it poroma. So I think this is a really good example that shows kind of both the poroma-like areas and the hydroacanthoma simplex-like areas. And here, the sweat duct differentiation can take a couple, a couple different forms. Sometimes it makes kind of cystic dilated spaces with sweat secretion in the middle. Other times, it's little tiny lumens like this. Let's see if that gets in focus. With a little droplet of, of inspissated or dried out sweat secretion in the middle. And I think the best ducts are down here. Here's some more of those kind of dilated, branchy looking ducts. And then these are the perfect, that's exactly what you want. This is what you should burn in your mind as. This is what sweat duct differentiation looks like usually in poroma and, and colleagues and related entities. Perfectly round, punched out little holes, lined by a dense pink lining that we call the cuticle, and often with little droplets of secretion in the lumen. And if you do a stain like CEA, a carcinoembryonic antigen, it will often highlight the lumen there. Sometimes I will do that if I'm having trouble finding ducts. Although I've found that stains don't work spectacularly on these. So I've over the years, I've done it off and on. And in the end, I usually just kind of make a decision on on H and E a lot of times. Every once in a while I'll try it, but nice ductal differentiation here. So poroma here, in my opinion, and then uh, hydroacanthoma simplex. And the thing that poroma and hydroacanthoma simplex both share is this, the sharp cutoff between the edge of the tumor cells and the adjacent epidermis, right? A few things do this. Uh, one of the other things it does is clear cell acanthoma, right? So I think sometimes I'll think about, could it be poroma? or hydroacanthoma simplex, could it be clonal seb, could it be clear cell acanthoma if I just see this edge? Obviously looking at the whole lesion here, I would not think about clear cell acanthoma, but that sharp delineation between tumor cells and adjacent normal epidermis, I think a very, very helpful clue for the diagnosis of poroma or hydroacanthoma simplex. So that is a, a really beautiful example of this entity. Uh, I rarely ever see hydroacanthoma simplex. I, I see poromas, but pretty rare to see poroma that's only in the epidermis, at least in my experience. So this is a good one.